Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today we have some really interesting information that's been going on for quite a while now throughout um, a lot of different universities and everything else. And you won't believe why the government is funding this. I have to tell you, folks, uh, I find it a little disturbing. Not surprising, but a little disturbing. The Center for Environmental Sustainability uh, through insect farming. All right, they have been established under a newly awarded $2.2 million grant from the National Science Foundation. Now, the schools that are involved in this right now is IUPUI in Indiana, IU University, and Texas A&M, and Mississippi State University. The lead researchers in these schools are basically farming out insects that me and you are going to be eating in the near future. And it has already been approved in certain sectors. Right now, the center will also partner with over 30 different companies in the U.S. and abroad, with including major food suppliers such as Mars, Tyson Foods, as well as insect farming pioneers such as Aspire Food Group and Beta Hatch Incorporated. Now, the reason they're doing this is, is because according to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, it's estimated that the traditional agricultural will fall about 40% short of the world's needs food supply by 2050. So this is going to be their answer, one of their answers to the food shortages that are coming. The leaders of the Center of Environmental Agency through insect farming say that the insect farming can provide a practical, economical, and sustainable path for producing high volume protein and reducing agricultural waste addressing issues related to climate change, environmental substance, and economic development and agricultural lack of farming. These insect proteins are also suitable for the use as feed for animals, which we all know, such as fish, poultry, and swine, as well as used in food products for consumption by pets and people. Already, the U.S. and European Union and others have some approval for use of certain insects and proteins in food, such as the black soldier fly for animals, and for us humans, crickets and mealworms. Outstanding. Makes you just want to run out and buy something to eat, right? At an annual growth rate of 27.8%, insect farming provides competitive options to conventional protein sources. It is a sustainable animal feed and protein for human consumption. The insect industry is projecting to reach nearly 8 billion by 2030 with the rising global population predicted to reach 9 billion people, increased demand for food and feed output for existing yet depleting ecosystems will not only further tax our environment, but won't be significant enough to sustain 9 billion people. The diminishing global array of land, water, marine life, forests, and other biodiversities, resources have made insect farming a internal and a very important part of the global food economy as an ideal alternative source for animal protein, your steak. So who's to say that good old Mr. Bill Gates is not involved with this research. His name I could not find anywhere on any of these uh, articles. 
also, we do know, and I have reported to you, that Mr. Gates is already trying to genetically engineer meat. So if they can genetically engineer meat in a lab and then serve it also with a protein base of insects, their goal of really getting rid of animals for consumption is on the track that they want it to be on. And we, unfortunately, are along for the ride. This is what the future of this world holds for you and me. Makes you a little ticked off, if you ask me, because this is the way that we're going. This is their answer. We're going to turn to insects, genetically modified, lab-grown foods, and for what? To make sure that we can feed everybody in this world fake food. Makes you wonder. For as far as me, I will stay on the prepping side and try to sustain myself and my family for as long as possible. Although, if they speed things up the way they like to do, who knows when this could really kick into effect given the state that we're in right now with the lack of everything that is going on as far as all the bad weather that has been taking place, floods and droughts and, you know, all these different things that have caused all these prices to rise, the bad spending habits of the government that has put us into this recession, high interest rates and everything else, your food price when you go to the store, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you must be living under a rock. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. You all might want to really stay in tune to this type of stuff and get prepping now while you still can buy real food. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.